All my life I've felt alone. I've been an outsider looking in, never knowing how to take part, but always trying. Until recently, I've never known why I felt this way, where it came from, why I was always a spectator, never the participant. I know some things about myself. I am a mass of contradictions. I'm permanently uneasy, never content. I'm needy but can't accept anyone who tries to fill that neediness. I'm quiet but loud, normal on the outside but disturbed underneath. Always looking for the best but always seeing the worst. Now, as I enter a part of my life in which contentment and positive thinking finally seem possible, is the time to reflect on what I am and what has brought me to this point. My name is Jeff Randall, I'm 44, and there was a time in my life when I thought I wanted to die, but the reality was I just didn't want to live. They're not the same. I would say I've made three serious attempts on my life. The first attempt, it was close, but not close enough. I knew I was a pinprick away, and that really kind of sobers you. You're like, what am I doing? What have I done here? The line is now very fine. In fact, the, the, the line is only, it's a membrane. That, that's it. There's no danger anybody would get to you quick enough. And then you start to visualise the mess. You start to visualise the aftermath. And you're not, this is not about making a statement to anybody else. This becomes a really profound uh, investigation of yourself and your desire not to be here. I saw that no matter how hard I had tried to be positive in my life, it had always amounted to this. Be it private moments of self-harm or dramatic public displays of self-obliteration, the sad, pathetic truth was that I simply, without really understanding why, I despised myself. Despised myself so absolutely that I could see no escape. In real life, everything had frankly turned to shit. At that time, when it was really at, 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 its, um, at its zenith, I'm thinking, what's the point of everything? That's what you want away from, is the pain. It was never about just dying. The problem is, in not wanting to live. I was... admitted to hospital on the 19th of August, a Sunday, 1990, after having thrown myself from a tall building on a concrete. I remember landing and everything stopped. No pain, no emotion, nothing, blank. Previous 15, 20 seconds had felt like a week. And it was like a proper movie reel. It, it, there was an order to it, a, a chronology, when you think, where's all this coming from? From birth to now, like that. And, and then, of course, you, <laughs> you, <laughs> you hit the ground and you think, wow. I'm not dead. Throughout my life I have felt alone, but there has been a way of softening the many blows and that was through the physical act of writing. One day, I actually wrote in a very small A5 uh, manual. It was a piece about what happened to my legs on, on the 19th of August 1990. And a friend of mine, she literally asked, what happened to your legs? And I got this wee book and I went, that's what happened. Oh, hand in her book. And she read it. And she looked at me and she went, you've got something there. My sister got me the forms to go back to college to suit my hires, to get into Edinburgh Uni. And that was it. I was going to study English and Scottish literature at Edinburgh University. Nothing less than that. And it was the first place in my life that I felt totally and absolutely comfortable in. 
The original handwritten manuscript of around 206,000 words was written between the 8th of May and the 19th of August 2006. And although I can never pinpoint the moment when the pen took control, it certainly did. During that unfeasibly hot Edinburgh summer, I underwent a personal metamorphosis of massive proportions. In short, stripped bare of any preoccupations, I was finally able to be me. I'll never say I, I conquered my demons, but I'm above them in their league, let's say, and I'm quite happy with that, that'll do. It's okay to be ill, it's fine. Talk to somebody, somebody first of all that you trust. Well, you might think it's the end of your world, nine times out of 10, it really isn't. And when that one time out of 10, when it is, that's when the professionals can intervene and sort it out. That's what I would, and that is genuinely what I would say, not just what I would say to camera.